Hello and welcome to today's lesson. Uh, we are doing solving quadratic inequalities. And topic number one is going to be factoring. So make sure you guys have some notes. Make sure you take out your notes. Copy down some notes. Because watching me do math doesn't mean that you know how to do math. Okay? Let's go. Math with the speed. Math with the speed. There's a thousand other places that you'd rather be. But you're watching math with Miss B. Okay, so solving by factoring. Remember that when you're factoring a quadratic, that you always want to make sure that your problem is set equal to zero. So what's stopping my problem from being set equal to zero right now is that negative one. Um, so I'm gonna move that negative one over to the other side, obviously by adding one. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna draw the little line, da 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 da. Four plus one is five, right? And then the one and the negative one cancel out to give me zero. So now I have a trinomial. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna factor my trinomial out, right? You should know how to factor. I'm not teaching you how to factor right now, but just in case you forgot, I did the little side work off for you on the side, okay? I'm not explaining that, but there it goes. Okay, so once I factor, I figured out my answer is negative parentheses x plus one, parentheses two x minus five is greater than or equal to zero. So after you factor, you set each set of parentheses equal to zero on its own. So we're gonna set x plus one equal to zero and then we're gonna set x, two x minus five equal to zero. I keep saying equal to, but you understand that we're doing inequalities today. So it's really x plus one is greater than or equal to zero, x, two x minus five is greater than or equal to zero, but I just keep saying equal to just because it's easier. But we are doing inequalities today, okay? Um, so I'm gonna solve each uh, equation. The first one is a one-step equation. I'm just moving one to the other side. So I'm gonna get x is greater than negative one, greater than or equal to negative one. So then my inequality, two x minus five, I'm gonna add five to both sides first, and that's gonna give me two x is greater than or equal to five. I wanna divide by two because remember, we need x by itself, and with the two being there, I can't do that. So we're gonna divide by two. So I'm gonna get x is greater than or equal to five halves. Five halves is the same thing as what in decimal form? 2.5. Great, good job. So you solved the inequality, but you know with inequalities you have to graph them, okay? So come with me on a journey, okay? My two solutions were x is greater than or equal to negative one and, and, and then x is greater than or equal to 2.5. Notice I put the smaller one first and the bigger one second. On my little number line, I'm gonna put, I used numbers negative two to positive four because I knew that negative one and 2.5 would fit on that line. So I'm gonna graph negative one. Closed circle, why did I use a closed circle and not an open circle? because this is inequalities, people, okay? Um, and then I graph 2.5. 2.5 belongs between two and three. So right in the middle, 2.5, bada bing, bada boom, okay? I know y'all don't be liking decimals, and the decimals get worse. So just be okay with this one, okay? So closed circle, closed circle. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna visually demonstrate each area of the number line, okay? So I have the area that's from negative infinity all the way to negative one. I have the area that's in between negative one and 2.5. And then I also have the area that's from 2.5 all the way to infinity, right? I did this because what you need to do is you need to choose a test area. You need to choose a point in each area of the number line so that you can test each area to see where your solution is gonna lie. All right, so the first area in the blue area 
I'm going to choose negative two because negative two is a number in the blue area, right? And I'm gonna plug it in to our inequality, all right? I'm gonna plug it in and I'm gonna do PEMDAS. I'm not explaining PEMDAS to you because if you're doing this lesson, you should know how to do PEMDAS, okay? So when I do PEMDAS, I get negative 10 is greater than or equal to negative one. And that is a false statement. So my solution cannot be in the blue area. Let's move on to the purple area. I'm gonna choose zero. Zero is always an easy number to choose. So if it's in, an, in your area, choose zero, right? I'm gonna plug it into my inequality, da, da 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 I'm gonna get four is greater than or equal to negative one. Again, I'm not doing PEMDAS for you. You should know how to do PEMDAS though. Hey, make sure you know how to do PEMDAS. Anyway, so I'm gonna do four is greater than or equal to negative one. Is that a true statement? Yes, so that means my purple area could be my solution. And then last but not least, I'm gonna check my, my yellow slash orange area. It depends on what your screen resolution looks like, I don't know. I'm gonna plug in a four. When I simplify and do PEMDAS, I'm gonna get negative 16 is greater than or equal to negative one. Is that true? It's definitely false. So the only area which my solution can be is the purple area. See how I drew the green line where the purple area is? So now that I know that, I can write my solution in proper form, okay? We're doing interval notation here, but you could also do set notation too. So I think I have both of them for the first answer. Yay! Okay, uh, so my answers have to be between negative one and 2.5. That's where my answers lie, okay? So bracket, negative one comma 2.5 bracket, because I use brackets because it's equal to, okay? If you don't have, know about interval notation and set notation, you should go watch my video on interval notation and set notation. Next example, solving by factoring. Okay, so x squared minus 5x minus 24 is less than or equal to zero. I need to set the problem equal to zero. Oh my gosh, it's already set equal to zero. Great, so now I'm gonna factor. You should know how to factor, but if you don't know how to factor, I did the side work for you. Look, I'm so nice. Anyway, you're gonna set both factors equal to zero. You already know what's up. Ta-da, ta-da. And then we're gonna solve each, each inequality. Minus three, minus three. X is less than or equal to negative three. And then we're gonna do plus eight, plus eight. So X is gonna be less than or equal to eight. Ooh, I did that really quickly. Anyway, so those are my two answers. X is less than or equal to negative three. X is less than or equal to eight. So obviously I'm gonna set up a number line, but my number line, my numbers might have to be adjusted because I need to use a number line that fits negative three and eight. So this is the number line I chose. Um, so notice I skipped by two. So negative four, negative two, zero, two, four, six, eight. So that means that negative three is gonna be in between negative two and negative four. And then uh, positive, eight is gonna be all the way at the end. Closed circles, again, why did I use closed circles? Because I have equal to symbols, greater, less than or equal to symbols. If I just had a less than, it would be an open circle, which we'll do that soon. So I'm gonna go ahead and just show you guys visually the three different areas of our number line, okay? And remember, you're gonna choose a test point in each area of the number line. So I did x squared minus 5x minus 24 is less than or equal to zero. Um, the first one I chose is negative four. So I plug in negative four into the original equation. And again, PEMDAS, I'm not doing the PEMDAS for you. I show it though. So if you pause the video, if you need to know how PEMDAS works, okay? Um, so I did 12 is less than or equal to zero. Um, False, 12 is not less than or equal to zero. So my blue area don't work. I'm gonna plug in zero for the purple area. Again, if zero is in your area, choose zero. 
And when I simplify, I got negative 24 is less than or equal to zero. That is true. So my purple area is gonna work out for me. And then I also have my nine. Uh, so nine is like off the number line, but I used it because nine is in the orange area. So I plug it in and I get 12 is less than or equal to zero. Um, false. So my orange area is not going to work. So the only area that works is purple. So I'm going to highlight the purple area of my number line. And now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and display my answer. There's my answer in set notation and in interval notation. So I am only, only in the number line between negative three and positive eight, and those are closed circles. So that's why I use bracket, negative three comma eight bracket, okay? Um, I use less than or greater than symbols because we're in between. When we're in that in between, that's when we use, that's, when, that's what that notation looks like, okay? One more example. Okay, we're solving by factoring. So x squared plus 27 is greater than 12x. What does my problem need to be set equal to? Zero. Oh, so good, I'm proud. Um, so the 12x needs to get on that other side. Now, sometimes if you don't remember, you can't combine 27 and 12. We don't do that here. Okay, those are not like terms. 27 minus 12x, I can't combine those. I just have to stick the 12x in the middle uh, because that's what position it goes in. Because remember when you have quadratics, you have ax squared plus bx plus c. So the x term, the linear term goes in the middle and the constant goes at the end. Anyway, now what should I do? After I set it equal to zero, factor, good job, look, look at it. You. Okay, I'm gonna factor again. You might not remember how to factor, but there it goes. If you don't, if you forgot, so I have x minus three, x minus nine is greater than zero. So you want to set both your factors equal to zero. So x minus three, x minus nine equals. I mean, not equal to, but greater than zero. Greater than zero. Okay. Again, I keep saying equal to. My bad. We're doing inequalities, but you get it, right? Um, the equal to just rolls off the tongue. So we're going to solve. So we're going to plus 3 plus 3. I'm going to get x is greater than 3. And then we're going to plus 9 plus 9. So x is greater than 9. I keep going to that next slide like super duper quick. Um, anyway, so here's my number line. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'm going to graph. Notice, ooh, what kind of circle did I put on the three? What kind of circle did I put on the nine? I know some of y'all were like, oh shoot, I put a closed circle. No, you gotta put an open circle because our symbols are greater than symbols, not greater than or equal to symbols. Okay, so greater than symbols. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna denote, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you which areas of the graph we're working with. Show me what you're working with. And we're gonna choose a test point in each area of the number line. So I need a point in the blue area. So we're gonna go with two. I know that's off the line, but you get it, right? So we're gonna go with two. Um, I plugged it in and I got seven is greater than zero. That is true. So we're gonna use the blue area. So I plugged in five. I got negative eight is greater than zero. That is false. So we're not gonna use the purple. And then I have 10, that's in the orange area. I plugged in 10, seven is greater than zero. Is that true? No, that's, yeah, that is true, sorry. So we're gonna use <laughs> the orange area. What does that look like? So I have an arrow there. and an arrow there, ooh. Okay, so that means we're going from negative infinity, pausing, a gap, jumping over a nine, all the way to positive infinity. That is a union of two separate sets, all right? 
So that's our third example. That's our solution, negative infinity to three in union with nine to infinity. Notice on my interval notation, I only used parentheses. I did not use brackets because there's no equal to. That's why I also used open circles. Pay attention to that, guys. Now, like I always say at the end of every video, what should you do? You should go back and see if you can do the examples on your own and get the same answers. And if not, I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.